Warning! The Fun Bunch podcast features videos and audio content from the internet and live in studio guest. While most of the content is family friendly and approved for all audiences, we cannot guarantee the show to be rated G at all times. So please proceed with caution. Now we welcome you to sit back and enjoy the show. Here's Billy and Marco. Hey, 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 what's up? And welcome to the Fun Bunch Podcast. My name is Billy, and that is my very good friend Marco right there. Make sure you hit share, like, comment. Let us know uh, if you uh, want to hear something that we're uh, talking about, or maybe you want us to uh, cover something that you have. We would love to hear from you down in the comments. Make sure uh, you're here and you can share it with your friends, trying to grow the channel here. Uh, and uh, I think uh, after it's taken me uh, almost, uh, well, I don't know how many days we are past the Hail Mary, but I'm just now coming down. But let me tell you something. I've watched that thing now through TikToks and, and, and YouTube shorts maybe a thousand times. And I got to be honest, I never get tired of it, actually. No, dude, my favorite <laughs> line has become Jim Nance, dude. It was so perfect. He's like, and he almost sounds like he's nervous. He's like, this town is going crazy. And I was yeah. like, dude, I love yeah. it. Like, it's <laughs> it, it just the way he said it, what was going on. You see every, it's just a melee. I'm like you. I've, I've watched it at least 175 times. Yeah. Uh, and I'll tell you, the algorithms know what I want, man, because they just keep feeding it to me. <laughs> yeah. like, they yeah. just feed it to me. As a typical Skins fan, too, uh, sometimes when I watch the start of the play, I'm like, he's going to miss this. Like, it can't keep happening. Uh, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's like, because, you know, that's the luck that we've had for 20 years, uh, you know, but uh, every time uh, Noah Brown catches in the end zone and just to see the reaction, the different angles, to see the bleachers go up and down, uh, to feel the vibe of the city. And really, there's a, I'm going to put a, we're going to put a TikTok out here in a second. I, I found some guy that really, I think they did an NFL films cut. Have you seen the NFL films cut of that yeah. thing? Yeah. And dude, the guys just hugging each other in the locker room. You can just tell, man, these guys love each other, dude. And I, I got to be honest, man. And I didn't really know that. Uh, I, I didn't really know what to expect from Dan Quinn because I didn't really follow him that much. But dude, I got to give that dude some credit, man. He's got these guys not only believing in each other, but fighting and, and playing for one another. When you get 53 guys on one page, with one goal uh, for the love of brotherhood, you and I both have been on on teams, and man, it is just incredible things happen, and 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 it doesn't happen for everybody because I'm sure most of the NFL teams are similar to that. But I don't know, man. He's just uh, it, it it just seems like more and more like this team is like a team of destiny. I hate to say that, but it, well, I hate to say that too. But I mean, you're right though because remember, dude, the turnover was crazy. It was like the biggest roster turnover in forever in the NFL. Yeah. So most of these dudes didn't even know each other. Coming into camp, you've got a rookie quarterback, all new coaching staff, pretty much a new owner. Um, you know, it, 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 on paper, this was should have been a disaster, right? I was talking with my oldest son the other day. It's like, we already have three more wins. Here we are at six and two, week eight, than I thought we'd have the whole year. Oh, right. Well, yeah. I, more than we had last year already. Yeah, I know. <laughs> well, I'm like, I'm like, here we are, week eight. We're already, you know, I thought there was no way we were going to have six wins again with all the newness and, um, just the cloud that still kind of just stenches this team, um, you know, going into the off season and man, it's like, you, it's even getting, it's weird. It's hard to get in, like, to remember the, like, like the, the bottomless pit hell of oh. Dan Snyder. It's getting, and it's like, the more I watch the Hail Mary, the more I forget about the past, which is awesome. Yeah. Well, you know, and and it's it seems trite when people say it because they say it over and over and over about the culture, the culture, the culture, and it's like people are like why doesn't the culture change? Because it's this, that, and it's like, dude, and and the, and the saying is winning will fix everything. And once oh, yeah. you start to win, it fixes more than just the players now believe they can win. The fans believe we can win. And and you have start to have this belief system. But then it just you start to positive think about things and and it just changes your whole entire outlook. And that's exactly what's happening in Washington, man. Look, you see anybody complaining about the name anymore? That's nope. gone. Nobody's yep. complaining about the name. You see anybody complaining about eighteen dollar Bud Lights? Because that was going on week week two. They were taking pictures like, what the hell? We know that nobody's yeah. complaining about that. Um, all we've ever done is complain about that stadium. It's old, it's beat down, it looks to nope, no complaints. Yeah. So yeah. You start yeah. you start stacking those dubs like that, man, and yeah. you forget real quick about all the stuff that we've been complaining about. 
Yeah, and you got to give Josh Harris and the, and the Harris group their credit because he's done a lot of stuff with the stadium, inside of the stadium. I saw that they did this time thing with the, the lights are going on and off, and they're like, the only reason we can do this now is because he put like $2 million into the into the new lights, into the new stuff, and the scoreboard, and all the stuff that, that he, you know, so he's he's made a little bit of dif- difference in that way as well. So, uh, you know, the prices are the prices, dude. I mean, you go to any game. I mean, I'm, I'm sure we're probably on the higher end of some things, but but you're right, though. When you're winning, it's like, man, I don't care about anything. So it's it's good to uh, you know to at least have that in your back pocket and have a team that's. Uh, I don't know if you saw what I put on TikTok, but there's a 95.5 percent chance that we are going to the playoffs. Insane! If you'd have told me to, a I year tried ago, I tried to ignore that. I tried to ignore <laughs> that. I was like 95. I mean, we're 95? the top. We're the top person on the list of NFC people as far as making the playoffs. Now, obviously, winning in the playoffs is different, but. Um, I mean, just to be in that breath, it's like I just keep telling man, we're like the uh, you know we're like the the girl at the prom that is uh, that is coming to her own and and was maybe a tomboy or whatever, and she's wanted all the guys to look and talk to her, and then all of a sudden she's that summer she came back and she's, she's the one 10. that everybody wants. She's a ten, <laughs> and everyone's yeah. talking about. Everybody's uh, talking about her. Yeah. Um, yeah, but, it's um, dude, it is surreal. It's a surreal feeling, and it's like funny. It's like now every time we talk about this, and I look at our next opponent, and I'm like, ooh, there's another opponent on paper. We should, do, you know. And then I start thinking about all of this stuff, you know, ninety five percent, and you know, the way we're not just beating teams, the way we're beating teams. I mean, we've got a couple of just beatdowns yeah. this year of just scoring just massive amount of points and just just beating teams into submission, and I'm like. Man, I'm not used to. I'm used to the other side of that, but I'm not used to us doing that. Right, right. Like we're doing that, yeah. And and now I'm just like, dude. I mean, when does this end? So I started thinking of like other teams recently. Like, when did it end? And I'm like, man, this feels really good. I don't know how much longer we can do this, but this feels really, really good. Yeah, I mean, I hope we can continue to do it. I mean, I, I on a long scale uh, you know, look for the future. I mean, it looks pretty, pretty, pretty great. I mean, we're at the front of a rookie, uh, you know, quarterback contract, a rookie left tackle contract. We've gotten a lot of nice free agents. Um, you know, it's 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 the other thing is obviously it's coming to the trade deadline. We're going to talk about the Giants coming up here uh, on this podcast, but uh, and with the trade deadline. It's really weird. It's sort of like how I felt at the uh, the last game where I was totally distraught with 59 minutes and, and 50 <laughs> seconds to go. And yeah. then I was totally elated. And same with the, with this trade deadline. At, on one hand, I'm like, how did the... How do the Chiefs keep getting these people, and where are the where are they getting this money? And then the rich get richer, and why aren't we doing anything? And then half of me is like, you know what? I like our guys. We like where we're at. We're in in no rush really to try to maybe change what the chemistry of the actual players is because that's a big thing. You, you bring somebody in that doesn't mesh, and maybe it screws all of what we've built here so far up. Yeah, I mean, there's something to be said for we're rolling with the guys that got us here. Right. Yeah. Like these are the guys that got us here. Why? Why change it? Uh, I just wonder as time goes on and you start to, you know, every every roster is going to have um, a challenge. Right. It's going to be injuries. Guys get yeah. worn down. So, you know, it's just something to to expect. Like like so you're going to have to have some depth because you can only say next man up if you got another man to go up. So you can only next man up this thing so long before it's like you need some talent. We've been pretty healthy. Pretty healthy. I mean, the left tackle thing is a little concerning now. Um, but that said, you know, even the the third string they bring in, it's like didn't really notice anything. But that's a, that's something to definitely keep your eye on. Um, the John Allen thing, you hate to see him go down, but my God, I mean, I think that defensive line against Chicago. I mean, look at the look at the numbers. I mean, Caleb couldn't even throw for for fifty percent. So yeah. I mean, you know, well, Johnny Newton was the number one rated PFF defensive player in all of football. In all of I mean, football, I mean, <laughs> not just in all of football. Team, so. He's a kid. He's a freaking kid playing yeah. like a man. Um, so you know, like I said, I think we go back to saying, you know, hey, the light at the end of the tunnel. We're so used to it, you know, being the train. But right now, it looks like the light at the end of the tunnel may not be a train in Washington anymore. Yeah, and that feels pretty damn good, man. But as far as the trade deadline goes. I don't know your exact thoughts on it. My whole thing is I just don't think you can sit back and do nothing. I'm not saying you got to make the splash. You don't have to do that. But I'm just don't know that it, where you are at six and two, Jaden Daniels has thrown your window up. Why, the window's wide open. And I know I see some commanders fans going like, stop, stop, stop. I'm like, I, it's not me. Look at the record. You're six and two. 
You got a rookie Q. You got a rookie left tackle. Those are your guys you got to run into the future with. Like, why not start to, start to try to win games now? Yeah. No, I agree. Uh, you know, and I, I, I'm the same way. Maybe we do something that uh, helps. But, I mean, we, we are getting thin at left tackle. We'll see what happens with Coleman coming back here uh, and how, how hurt Lucas is. But uh, it would be good, man, to have, uh, you know, maybe a nice edge rusher or maybe another shutdown corner uh, to really help through, uh, you know, what's going to be. You know, we're only eight games into the season, so it's halfway. Um, and we're going to turn the page to uh, the Giants because, uh, I mean, this is the, again, uh, we sort of talked about this uh, this trap game mentality. This could be that. But before we turn the page uh, on this, you may, uh, it's funny because I watch your, uh, you know, we're on the same TikTok channel, but you uh, we, we do videos separately sometimes. And I saw a lot of your your videos with these Bears fans. And I, I just, you are 100%. What is going, these Bears fans, I've never seen a fan base. They're so volatile. They're, I thought the Eagles were bad. To, for, you know, for me, if you're in the NFC, it's always the Eagles, the, the worst fans. Eagles, Giants, Dallas. And then uh, and, and then and, uh, in, in that order for, for you know, because I, I didn't think there were anything worse than the Eagles fans. But you know what? Bears fans, they may be worse. They might be worse. I've, I've got them all up there together. Um, to be honest with you, it's a trifecta at number one. Uh, <laughs> Eagles, Cowboys, and now the Bears. How have they hidden this for so long? How have they not been called out on this dude? They're the, they're they're the worst. I've never seen anything like it. They had a million excuses going into the game. They got ten million coming out of the game. Half of them deleted the comments. Now they're showing back up. It's like they just it's like they hibernated. And then all the <laughs> well, they are bears. Are these, they're like, we got to get back to being bears fans <laughs> and getting online with our unreasonable, stupid perspectives. Like I've never seen anything like it. And yeah, dude, I, I you know it's other people are starting to comment on the TikToks, going like, yeah, dude, bears fans. Like, who would have thought? And Somebody just wrote, there's like, well, that's what happens when you pick Trubisky over Mahomes. And I didn't, <laughs> I didn't even think about that, but that's an interesting point, too. Um, but yeah. yeah, I don't know. Like, I actually t- I actually looked at this the other way. It was a very close game. It was a competitive game. It's everything I think you want in a 425 game. Only one team can can win, slight chance of a tie in the regular season. But now you've got like a rivalry. You've got Washington and Chicago. This is going to be a thing. This is going to be a thing moving forward. It's Caleb. It's Jaden. Jaden's up now one nothing. But this is going to be a thing. These are two young guys, high ceilings. Um, you know, I was in Caleb. His numbers were terrible. I mean, I'm, I mean, you know, Bears fans get mad at that. You look at the numbers. If you want to say they're not terrible, fine. I thought his numbers were terrible. Um, and he was on a bye at two weeks to prepare for that. But I will say, Caleb Williams has a killer instinct. Um, he's a guy who doesn't quit. He's not afraid to get in the middle of the thing and, and, and keep it going. I don't think you can ever count a guy like that out. Um, so I don't know why bears fans are so mad because it's like, now you've got this thing that's going to be fun and exciting moving forward. Um, but man, they, you know, all I see from the bears fans is Jaden's nothing but lucky. He's too skinny. He won't last. And it's dude, what a weird perspective. Well, that brings us to uh, the first thing. Listen to what these guys actually said on this. is I don't even know how this podcast is. I'm going to check this out. Play him. Play Jaden Daniels, and I promise you we're going after his ribs. Yeah, I promise you. <laughs> this has been a violent I podcast feel, this I week. I'm not gonna lie. You know, we got called out by uh, by uh, uh, Washington Ooh. fans, which I didn't even know they had them. But uh, we got called out by Washington fans for saying uh, in, in, uh, in football, if they put Jaden Daniels out there with bad ribs, Hit them in, hit him in them. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, we got called out for that. Yeah. That's why most guys, you know, um, most guys won't wear a brace on something that's afflicted because they don't want because they know. don't want the target on there. But absolutely. Yeah. Well, I mean, what are we doing out there? I'm not. Well, oh, I'm going to avoid his rib. No, no, no. Every chance you get, every chance you've got, you take a piece of him out. You know, a guy's got a bad shoulder. You see the harness. Yeah. What do you do? Abuse that arm. Abuse. <laughs> Okay. It looks like I can't get over. It looks like <laughs> that guy could be like Steve Mariucci's cousin, <laughs> but he's like his fat cousin that didn't yeah. stop you. <laughs> yeah, his, his you know, cousin who is he not just off of Ozempic for a while. Ozempic, and now, yeah, his, his balloon back up <laughs> his, uh, twice his other way. Listen, man, I, I you know I. I played football, and sure enough, I mean, I'm sure if somebody's got a bum knee or whatever, for a show, you, maybe you test them out. I don't know, but to be talking like that. Um, it just goes to show you, man. They just, uh, I don't know. The sportsman. I that was an ESPN podcast. Like ESPN is supposed to be like rainbows and unicorns and nice and friendly. These, these guys are putting bounties out on people. <laughs> <laughs> like guys out there. But that's the other thing, dude. That's how short-sighted they're. Like, honestly, these professional, professional athletes, 
Like, if you think the name of the game is all you're going to do is just go hit a guy where he's injured and that's how you're going to win, that's actually not how you win professional sports games. Like, it's not how you win. So yeah. it's just funny that that's the angle they took of like, we're going to go hit him in his ribs. He's going down. It's it. That's over. It's like, eh, it's a lot more to a game than that. Yeah. Um, you know, there's a lot more to a game than that. And so that really doesn't even surprise me from, from, um, uh, Mariucci, XL Mariucci. <laughs> and uh, well, we'd be remiss to uh, show you at least just one more of one of my favorite Bears videos. Oh. <laughs> oh! And we're done. Jersey off. <laughs> On the floor. Oh On the floor. God. It's giving himself oh a weird name. <laughs> <like. laughs> he's oh. done. He's oh done. My God. <laughs> uh so uh yeah that's what uh you know what a weird what, what a weird instinct um just your take your shirt goes down to take your shirt off that's a <laughs> that's a strange instinct especially for a football fan but yeah um, i mean things didn't go my way there goes my shirt yeah uh, i don't know might as well just went uh for the second half of this just take it and put it in the trash now that it's off yeah, but you know, but uh, anyway, so there you go. Uh, well, that's all the time we're going to spend on the Bears. But uh, you know what? Good game. We'll probably you know we may see him in the playoffs. Uh, we'll see. So now, th there's th that a scenario I've seen floated on some uh, on some YouTube channels of like this is how it could happen, and you know I, I could easily see it, and that would be that would be great. I mean, the Bears don't don't scare me. I'll tell you that. Yeah. Well, turning the page to uh, another team that shouldn't scare us, uh, the Giants this year uh, having a, a lot of <laughs> – well, number one, the Giants have our number. So, I mean, and that's just a straight fan talking to a straight fan. For whatever reason, we have not been able to beat Daniel Jones. Looks like Joe Montana when he plays. Now, uh, they're starting the should we replace Daniel Jones – uh, talk and uh, are we going to and here's what I and, and anytime because they're doing this in Dallas too should we fire Mike McCarthy and every time I say I was like no please keep these people in place yeah don't fire anybody everybody keep Nick Sirianni keep Daniel Jones let Brian Dayball but let him become the president and the head coach uh, keep all of these people because uh, as long as they're at the helm we, you know we looks good, good for us why would we want to change a thing? We're six and two ahead of the division, right? We don't want anybody that I'm actually all for them giving Dak another contract. I know they just gave him one three weeks ago. I'd like him to give him another one. <laughs> yeah, uh, just uh, on know, the back end. Just another <laughs> Christmas present, a big one. Uh, yeah, so I'm 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 with you. Like the Daniel Jones thing, it's dude. It's almost like, and we saw it with Mariota, right? Like you don't want to be the first team to face something that's just changed, right? right? To face a beast that has just changed and has gone through like a metamorphosis. You don't want to do that. It's well, the devil you know. Jameis Winston beat the Baltimore Ravens. 100%. A new set. Yeah, 100%. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah. You don't want to be first in line after the beast has gone through the metamorphosis. You don't know what changed. You don't know how to handle it. It's hard to practice it. And so here we are. No, Daniel Jones. Yeah, he's had our number. And let me give the Giants credit, right? Like, they're the only team this year has not let us score a touchdown. Like, I can't, you know, I mean, I just don't think that's something we could take lightly. Now, I don't mean to say that we were in the red zone, I think, like eight times or something yeah. ridiculous. Yeah. And there were a lot of self inflicted wounds in that. Yeah. It's a finishing issue for us. It's not getting down there. But that said, that said, that game was was razor close. It always is with Daniel Jones. I actually think the only reason Daniel Jones might still be in New York is because of Washington. Oh, because 100%. Take those stats away, those padded stats against our team. Dude, he is. He's terrible. Yeah. Like, yeah. terrible. Yeah. So, but I will say, this is also the best team, Washington team, that he's going to face even better than uh, when he faced us. I think that was week two. Um, week oh, yeah. Two. Now, yeah. Now we've so, sort of, our defense is, uh, it's a whole different beast here. Yes, so, it, it, the defense is much better. Jaden, obviously, more comfortable, more time under his belt. I think the running game works better now. Um, so, and I also think that, you know, where have the Giants gone from week two? They've kind of just stayed the same. We've definitely been on an upward trend. Yeah. So, uh, obviously, the keys in the game, I'm looking at if uh, Kevon Thibodeau doesn't look like right now uh, he's playing, although they do get uh, – they're getting some people back uh, off of injury. Uh, but the Giants, it's in New York, um, which is not an easy place to play. Uh, it's usually windy up there, and 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 you know they have a good fan base, but the giant fan same fan base will turn out. I'm sure there'll be some Skins fans up there as well. What are you? Uh, what are your keys to uh, coming out of uh, there with a win? Yeah, I mean the only guy on that team that really scares me right now is uh, Malik Neighbors. 
I mean, that guy, you know, he's playing with a quarterback that can't put it together, bad offensive line. So the quarterback's throwing the ball early, not having a lot of time. And Malik Neighbors, he's he's been a problem for every defense. Uh, he's, a, he's just been a problem. So, you know, again, is this going to be the St. Juice thing where we just sit back and and just pray that it's only one pass interference or only two pass interferences or three holdings? Um, that's getting a little old. So I'd like to I'd like to actually shut a number one receiver down. Yeah. And then see what the rest of the defense can do. So I think holding down Malik Neighbors, who is going to be their go to, has got to be the first thing you want to do on defense. Yeah. Well, the nice thing is, this is the second time we've seen him. So now we know how they're going to use him. I mean, they'll probably have a few wrinkles here and there. And Joe Witt Jr. seems to be a guy that likes to, uh, you know, see what's happening and then and then react. So I bet we have a good plan going in. And so since we've already experienced that, um, you know, I think that uh, it'll look uh, a little bit different than it did, uh, you know, four weeks or five weeks or whatever it was. I think Sterling Shepard's hurt. I don't know if he's coming back. Uh, so if we only have to worry about one one person, I think we can handle that because we can definitely roll coverage. Jeremy Chin and uh, I tell you, the, the other safety is just playing lights out. I mean, uh, I've been going through some of uh, the film for uh, 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 Quan Martin. Incredible play back uh, on the back end, which, again, so funny. I mean, that we've just struggled years and years and years with linebackers and safeties. And it looks like this year they knocked both of those out of the park. Uh, with the players that we have in place. And I love moving Luvu around uh, and just causing problems. So, uh, you know, but um, obviously neighbors on offense, on defense, you've got probably one of the best uh, tackles or nose guards, however they use uh, Dexter Lawrence in in, uh, in the scheme. That dude, you can't move him. He's hard to block. He makes a lot of problems for, for people. But our O-line, it looks like they, uh, you know, I like this fact that, that we're helping with the chipping. If you saw, did you watch the game, the G- Giants, uh, you know, Pittsburgh series? Because we're playing both of those teams back to back, so that was a good game to watch. Uh, but even Eli Manning was saying on the on the, on the Manning cast, you got to chip. The, what are they not chipping these guys for? And we actually, if you watch some of our plays, I think we chip on almost like seventy percent of of passing downs just to help our guys. And you know what? It still doesn't really matter. We still get out in the uh, in the patterns, and we still make things happen. Yeah, it's got to be one of the reasons why Jaden's had almost uh, the most time to throw um, an NFL quarterback this year. You know, people think like that that quarter of a second you knock someone back, man, makes a huge difference in the uh, in the overall result of the play. The only thing, too, though, with this Giants defense, like you said, that interior line, this up-the-middle running game, I don't know that that's going to fly um, against the Giants. Like, you're going to have to expose these guys on the outside. I think you can do that, um, especially when you're using Jaden Daniels out of that pistol. So I think you can make some problems for him on the outside, but I just this up the middle for a yard or two. We've, I swear, as good as we've been, we've got to lead the league in second and nines. I mean, it's just, I mean, you could, you, I hear it when I go to bed. It's second and nine, of course. <laughs> I just want to skip first down and let's just start off at second and nine uh, yeah. and get things rolling. So, um, luckily, we're really good on third down. But that said, you know, I think we can get out of some of these third down scenarios um, with some more outside runs. Uh, and things like that. I also am curious as to, you know, the Jaden health, they haven't really talked about it. Is he a hundred percent? What's going to be open as far as the, as the game plan, or are we going to lean on the three headed monster with Eckler Robinson and McNichols, uh, maybe some more tight end, uh, play short yardage stuff. Um, I say that. And then I also go, but the Giants are a team you want to put away. Like they're so beat down now. You want to go up 14, 16, 20 to nothing on these guys and just have them go, yep, this is just another another day of being a New York Giant. Yeah, they're going to roll over those teams like the Panthers. You could see they kind of sort of quit. And it's and it's funny, and I'm, and I'm not calling these teams out just by calling them out. I know because I've seen this team in the past get down yeah. 17 nothing, and it's over. I mean, you just, when you don't have a good team or you don't, you're not having great luck uh, or you don't believe in the system or the coach, there's a lot of reasons why teams will lay down uh, your, or, or you're one and eight or whatever it is. Uh, yeah, so, so these are the teams that if you get ahead early – it does two things. One, they're more likely to down, but two, it makes them one-dimensional. And you hear everybody in the NFL talk about one-dimensional teams are so easy to beat. Then you can pin back Frankie Louvu and Dante Fowler Jr. and Cleveland Farrell and, and and all of the guys up front can now just pin their ears back and uh, and really uh, you know go to Daniel Jones. Although they're going to have to rush in their lanes because uh, Daniel Jones, uh, say what you will about him, that dude can escape. He can run. Um, I mean, he here. stays in there. I mean, he's Slippery. not. I, yeah. And he gets up. He's tough. I mean, guy takes so many hits week in oh. week. The other, the other thing too, from a psychological perspective of teams like this, like the Giants, 
I mean, dude, they don't care. They, they, I mean, I, I could say, I guess you could say this is a must-win game. I, I mean, maybe to keep people's jobs, but they're not going to be scared of fourth down. They're not going to be scared of first and 10 and just oh, airing yeah. the ball out. They could care less because they've got, what's the standard? Like, like oh, well, we got we to stay alive in the playoff race. You're nowhere near the playoff race. So at this point, it's survival. That's all they're trying to do is eat this weekend. They're trying to literally eat. They're starving, and they'll do whatever they can do to stay alive. And I'm just telling you, that is a hard position to play, to play a team like that, especially in their house. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it is not, it is not fun. Uh, but you're right. If you can actually get your way into favorable spots, you know, and like the big, like you hit the nail on the head, we got to stay out of second and nine. And and for the first four or five or six games, we've been, you know, Jay Daniels would get four or five yards or Austin Eckler would run six or seven yards. And we wouldn't be in those those situations where it's a problem, but uh, lately it has been uh, the last couple of games. So, you know, that's something we really got to look out for, for sure. Yeah. I mean, I just walking into these games, especially the NFC. I mean, this, this, these are the kind of matches that made the NFC East, right? These are those, those matches where it's just ugly. It's in the trenches, just years of lines going at it, good running backs. Um, And so, you know, you, as much as you like that, you go, well, geez, that's a, that's, that's a tough position to be in. Uh, you're six and two, and this is a game you're expected to win. I don't know that we'll see anybody pick the Giants in the media leading up to it. Um, but I think there's a lot of people probably like me going, man, this is a, one of those games. I, I get a lot of the Cleveland vibes, you know, a game that, again, it's just, although Cleveland does have way more talent than the Giants, but the Giants don't care. They don't care. They're just thinking, hey, we're going to line up at 60 minutes. It's zero to zero. Let's see what happens. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it is the ultimate trap game, which I would be more worried about if we didn't have coaches like, you know, because I, I wish I, um, I tried to keep this uh, uh, this video. I got to try to find it. But uh, the NFL films type video that's out there, we're going to put it on our TikTok channel here. It's probably uh, it'll be a, a video or two down from here. Uh, but you can see I don't even know what coach it is. I think it's like a probably a, you know how they have some of the uh, quality assistant coaches or whatever. But yeah. the, um, Sandra Still and somebody were on the bench, and the guy comes over is like, "Hey, it's the last play of the game. Not, nobody should be sitting on the bench. We need all the energy and help we can get." And he gets them up off the bench, and they get up willingly, not disgruntledly. And I was like, "Dude, that is such a microcosm." of what we're talking about with this team. Like they, and they weren't just sitting on bench pounding. They were just like waiting. And so they got up and sure enough, they run out on the field uh, and do whatever. But it's, it's the coaching is really what I'm seeing this year. And it's, I, I always wondered how like Ron Rivera and uh, Jack Del Rio were decent players, how they just could not coach fundamentals. This team fundamentally now, sure. We, we, we made some mistakes, man downfield, stuff like that. But I mean, I just mean, even on the Hail Mary, they ran that and they made the diamond and they, they the way they practiced it and they you could just tell they're taking care of the details. And uh, I, I don't know the last Washington football team slash Redskins slash commanders team. It probably was under Gibbs where they just took care of every detail. You know, coming out that they know what to expect, where it's going, how to do it. Now, may they may or may not be, you know, successful. But boy, they are coached pretty good, man. Yeah, that's a good. I saw that moment, that video, you know, um, where the coach comes over and he's like, you know, all I know is one thing. We need that energy up here on the sidelines. Let's let's get right. up and do it. And so, yeah. And so that's just indicative of what's going on in the locker room and back at the, the facility in Ashburn. Right. That's a that's a culture situation. And like I've said before, you can't change a culture. You got to put a whole new one. You got to bring a whole new one into place, which is why you had to let go of so many football players, even football players that we were kind of like, man, like, do we really want Cam Curl to go? But you know what? A culture is just bigger than a person. It's bigger than a player. Yeah. And if you don't fit it, you don't fit it. You got to go because you can't change people. You can't change people. You got to bring new people in. And then that's how the culture is formed. That's what we're seeing. And I think, you know, I think about guys like you mentioned, Joe Gibbs. I think that's a great like that. That's a culture guy. I think about Mike Tomlin all the all the time. I, I don't know how he does it. He dude, this year. I mean, I look at that roster. I'm not impressed. I, but then I watch him play football and I'm like, these guys are straight dogs. Tomlin's never had a losing season in the NFL. And it's not like yeah. he's been coaching three years. He's been there a long time. And he just seems to he's able to get these guys. And it's not to buy into him. It's to buy into themselves. Like, that's what's crazy. It's like, I wonder what that is, you know? Well, and, so, and I think we're seeing some of that with, with Quinn and Witt and Cliff. We and are. 
Yeah. We are. Uh, they, the players love to be when they say, and it's kind of a cliche thing, players, coach, yada, yada. But what that is, is, is the belief system in the player. And Dan Quinn is an expert at giving these guys, uh, you know, not only does he, he tells them he, he believes in them. He puts them in positions to where they're going to be successful. They look at what you like to do, and then they build around that. And when you do that for a player, these players start to see this guy not only likes me as a football player, and he says it all the time. I like the person, Jaden Daniels. I, I mean, I love the football player too, but the person, Jaden Daniels, is is what I'm really about. And empowering these people, empowering these players to do, number one, what they love, and empowering them to be as successful as possible. And you can see, I think uh, last week, you might have seen uh, the, the uh, touchdown that uh, Ben Sennett scored on. It's called Taylor Swift. You know none of the coaches named it that. They're letting the players have input. And, and as dumb as a play call name or whatever, it just isn't, an, an, like you said, indicative of these coaches saying hey this is you we're just pushing the buttons this is your your team your guys you're doing all of this we're going to put you in the best possible position uh and and you're going to go out and play the best and the fastest and the hardest that you could possibly play and and mike tomlin is is the og of doing that yeah well you could tell from from the commanders dude these these players seem like they have some ownership of the team right and that's how you want to empower people to feel because that reaction like that those are guys that feel like they own 153rd of the team Right. You know, that that reaction is something, I mean, disbelief, tears, throwing each other on the ground, throwing coaches on the ground, screaming, yelling. I mean, that was something that was just you couldn't you couldn't fake that if you wanted to. And so, yeah, like you said, I mean, this is not something that we're used to here. Um, but again, I, I name, you know, some other situations that kind of it reminds me of, of that. And being that this is year one in this new coaching system and we're seeing that. Man, if we can, you know, same thing as everybody else, right? Keep guys healthy, da 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 da. But if you are able to do that and you have this thing, kind of like what Belichick built, and, you know, Belichick would have guys leave and come back, you know, coaches would leave and come back all the time. Yeah. It's like they'd go somewhere else and they'd be like, man, this isn't really the environment I'm used to. And that's because those environments are hard to find in the NFL, well, yeah. any professional sports. So they go back. Yeah, the Patriot way is Bill Belichick's way, really. But then the players gravitate towards that. And then, really, if you get really good at doing it, then you almost don't even have to. You become a CEO because, let me tell you something, one of these guys lays down or, or takes a playoff, it ain't going to be Dan Quinn. It's going to be Frankie Louvu or it's going to be Bobby Wagner or it's going to be Jeremy Chin or whoever. Terry McLaurin's going to be like, hey, bro, we don't do that here. We're not Because he actually said something interesting. In a, he was doing a, a, an interview a couple weeks ago, and he said, we wrote down goals of – because these new players were coming in before the rookies came in and all the veterans that were there wrote down, how do we want to go moving forward? Because it's smart. If you think about it, we're bringing new people in. This is a good chance to say, Hey, this is how we do it. And, and not, for the last 10 years, this is how we're doing it now. But they don't know that because they're just getting there. So you start from the ground up like that, and these players have responsibilities. They buy into it, and they police themselves at that point. Yeah, and look at the guys, though, that that you, that are going to be the future veterans, right? Look at Jaden Daniels, Sandra Still, Brandon Coleman. I mean, look at these guys that it's like you can already see when it's time to pass the torch from, you know, the Louvus and the Terry McLaurins and stuff like that. Like, dude, there's, like I said, the future looks pretty bright. Like, you're going to be able to pass it on to some guys that it's like, wow, you guys already there. You were there year one. So right. when those guys go age three, four, five years, the new dogs that come in, the puppies, they're going to have some good guys to latch on to just like these young bucks do now. And so that's the thing, like, and that's the thing about the draft and free agency and stuff, because you better bring in guys like that. Like uh, one guy that's got 15 sacks who might be a, just a just a home wrecker, right? But then there's another guy who's got 11 sacks, but he's the culture guy you want. Oh man, I'm going easy. 11 sacks. Yeah, easy, 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 easy. decision. Yeah, and that's yep. probably why. Again, we kind of reiterated why Adam Peters is not going, you know, hog wild here uh, in the trade deadline is because maybe he, those people aren't out of the people type of people. I mean, we have 10 draft picks. I think five or four in the top 100 next year. We have 160 million in cap space, so he is definitely looking towards the future, but also probably being very picky on who he brings in here. Uh, you know, and 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 the people like Diggs the earlier people were super, you know, that like, well we should. It's like or uh, you know DeAndre Hopkins or all these guys now that are causing problems on other teams. It's like, dude, we we don't need that. No, 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 no. And and you could as fast as you can build this thing up, you could tear it down easily, and it'll take one or two personalities to come in not make it fun 
and guys will roll their eyes and pfft, dude, that spreads quicker than optimism. That oh, it's like cancer. Way. Yeah, exactly. It'll yeah. just mutate and grow and grow. And the second you get somebody just rolling their eyes, being like, man, I just don't even want to be in the locker room with this guy. Like this is enough's enough. I don't want to be in the locker room with this guy. That's it. That's it. You'll lose it. And, and, yeah. and so I think you're right. They're being very careful about that. I mean, to me, it was obvious with, with Ayuk, um, who I think made sense in this friends with Jaden Daniels, there was something they just, they were just like, we just don't need it here. We just don't need it. And he had ties to Peters and um, great player, but, you know, didn't didn't work out. Well, and he's hurt. So and he's hurt. Yep. <laughs> it turned out to be pretty He's good going well, for the and, season. And even before he got hurt, I mean, you know, I guess that could happen no matter what team he goes to or, or not. Um, but he signed his deal and really didn't do much. So oh, it wasn't well, did you see, he didn't, he wore, he purposely wore black shorts. Did he hold the whole thing with Mike, uh, with uh, yeah, Kyle yeah, Shanahan? Yeah. Yeah. He, everyone was in red shorts. He wanted to wear black. And then when he made him take him off, he threw a temper tantrum threw, I mean, like, threw, like a four year old. Yeah. yeah. And so, you know, you just signed a deal, you know, making, you know, $200 million around whatever. Um, and then you want to argue about what color shorts you're going to wear. I mean, this is <laughs> that's the kind of stuff where you just go, we don't need it. First off, I don't need to pay you that money. You're, you're, you're a, you're, a, you're an employee. You're an employee, and this is the uniform, but you want to argue about that. And on top of that, you're not even producing on the field after we gave you a raise and paid you all yeah. that money. So yeah. it's just, just so many things. It's so many levels. It disrupts the management. It disrupts the ownership, the coaching staff, the locker room, right on down to everybody else on the sidelines. So you just you got to be so careful when you build these rosters. Man, roster building, is it's harder than coaching. It really yeah. is. The better you build the roster, the less you have to worry about the coaching. Well, the um, last time we had an architect uh, that was any good, his name was Bobby Beathard, although I could, you could argue Charlie Cashley did a really good job here too. But those those guys brought in what you're talking about, the same thing that Adam Peters is doing. And on that uh, form, we've gotten rid of a lot of people. One of our TikToks, uh, I think there was a Philly sports thing that is, that is uh, already, uh, you got to go look at it. It's like we, we're getting fleeced with Jahan Dotson. Uh, I think it says Jahan Dotson's the worst move that Howie Roseman's ever made. Uh, and, uh, and we've, you know, we've, Paired a lot of people. And speaking of that, uh, one of the people we got rid of is Jamin Davis, another first rounder. And uh, it's funny. I'm going to play this video, and I just want to get your uh, your idea of what you uh, what you think. Have you seen this? Poor guy. Oh. The Green Bay Packers have done it again. They have signed another stud, this time on the defensive side of the ball, former first round pick, Jamin Davis. This guy was cut six days ago from the Washington Commanders, and he is an absolute dog. A really good pickup for our team as Quay Walker's out with a concussion, and we keep getting our linebacker room younger and younger. And he's only 25 years old. In the 2022 season, this guy had 100 tackles, bro. This is a great signing, a young signing, and another signing that's going to make the Packers better than your favorite team. The Green Bay Packers have... Uh, so, uh... This guy is so misguided right now, <laughs> like... <laughs> Don't let him drive. He's not safe to drive right now for a multitude of reasons, dude. Well, let's let's go over to the number one comment, uh, which was by us, uh, <laughs> by me specifically. Do you see what it says? Uh, who's going to tell him? Who's going to tell him? Uh, the second one, which has way more. Only the reason mine is up there is because it was me. As a Commanders fan, bro, trying to gas Jamin Davis is wild. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, it may not work out as, uh, as, as well, or maybe it does. Sometimes a chain of scenery. Listen, uh, you know, Preston Smith was okay with us. He went to the Packers and balled out. So yeah, you know, who knows? It's, just the, it, it's just the kid's logic is so terrible. He's like former first round pick. Right. But he's he got released. Cut. He got released. <laughs> I mean, he didn't get a new, didn't make it to the second contract. Yeah. Um, so it just, it's interesting. And, and he calls him young, but it's a contract year next year. So there was no reason to keep this guy around. He wasn't even playing football. I think he was a healthy scratch twice this year. Yeah. You're right. It may work out for him great. He seemed like a nice, decent enough guy. He just couldn't play football. But the other thing, too, is like I look at guys like this and I'm like, so, so Jamin, like, what is your system? So the Rivera thing didn't work out. Then the Dan Quinn thing didn't work out. So what is your system, man? Like, what do you need to play good football? There's a certain point where it's like, you know, it's like it's like Rivera with quarterbacks. Well, Ron, what what kind of quarterback do you need? I mean, you had Heineke, you had Wentz, you had Alex Smith, you had Aiko. You know what I mean? It's like at some point, it's like, dude, who is the style of quarterback? It's not that. It's you. It's right. you. You know. So, and I think that's that's my fear for Jamin Davis is, I, you know, Jamin Davis. Honestly, dude, he he just struck me as he didn't have that killer mentality. He just didn't have it. it, it everything was so passive with him. 
Um, it just, I don't know. Just, I just, the mentality yeah. is not to be an NFL linebacker. Well, listen to what so Rivera and Jack Del Rio, both linebackers, and they couldn't turn this guy into a stud inside linebacker or even outside uh, Mike Mike or a weak side linebacker. And then what is even a worse look on him is the fact that you go to Dan Quinn, who will put you anywhere and try to get the best out of your current skill set, and he still didn't work. And so if you that's like two sides of the gamut for for players uh so if you if you didn't work out in either one of those it's it has to be on you at, at some point and maybe a change of scenery uh will be good uh and and he'll and he'll he'll fight it out because you're right he, i mean he seems like a decent guy and he made a few good plays here and there uh and i wanted him to be great only because i didn't want to strike out on another first round draft pick but that is exactly what happened so i remember draft night and all like all i kept seeing was like way to draft a third rounder in the first round, and yeah. I'm like, oh, God. Yeah, I called uh, 106.7 The Fan on draft night, and I'm telling you, I wish I would have. I wish I could have kept the audio. My, bro- my brother-in-law and my sister were with me, and I. it was Scott Jackson, and I went off on people that were – because, listen, the linebacker is the quarterback of the defense, all right? And so what have we learned so far just by looking at this year? When you have a quarterback that's played five years – and Jaden Daniels is that quarterback to Caleb Williams played a year and a half, two years. You see the stark difference from the start. They just have, you have to have played the position to be good at it. Jamin Davis played eight games as linebacker, eight, that's it. And then he went to the draft and he played for the University of Kentucky. And listen, they're not playing Alabama at Kentucky. And so the one thing you can't say is he was really athletic in college. Well, guess what? In the NFL, everyone is athletic. The punter is athletic. So that doesn't help you in the pros. The pros, you got to be good at your job. Bobby Wagner is good as a linebacker. That's all he's ever done since he was six. So for some reason, like the body of work quotient went out the door in the NFL for a while. I think it's going to come back in, but it's like, yeah, you'd have guys that were playing like, you know, five, eight, 15 games their entire college career being drafted in the first round. I remember like Ryan Tannehill was a quarterback for like 12 games because he was a he was a wide receiver. I'm like, you're going to go for him in the first round? Like, yeah. barely had knows, knows what he's doing. I mean, he barely knows what he's doing. And he actually parlayed it into a decent career money wise. Um, but he was never like a, you know, I mean, he's not definitely not one of the best quarterbacks in the last uh, 10 or 15 years. But, you know, my point is, is like the whole system here was broken. And that's what allowed guys like Jamin Davis to walk into the door here because Ron was also, he had GM powers. Right. So it's like we were trusting him to pick the talent and then coach the talent. And he would say something and everybody else would just go, yeah, OK, cool. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll go with that. I mean, are you telling me there wasn't one person? Because remember with Ron, we had Ron, who was sort of the GM, but then we sort of had three other GMs. And yeah, nobody, well, we joke all the time about the size of these guys, business cards with the Rivera. <laughs> they, they were just passing out titles like <laughs> Santa came in and here's a title and here's a title and here's a title yeah. and it's crazy and so that system of dysfunction allowed guys like Jamin Davis to, to come into the building because there should have been one guy going are you insane like it's fine if you want to draft Jamin Davis but let's wait till pick 88 because he's going to yeah. be there yeah or even the fourth round it probably still be there uh he was the GM and the coach it turns out he couldn't do either one of those jobs but uh you're right <laughs> no. he had Marty Marty Her- Herney from the Panthers who was Carolina. his buddy then he had Martin Mayhew then him and then there Jason w- Dave Williams or whatever Jason whatever he, uh, he was in there goofing around and then they had somebody that was just like a silent guy yeah so yeah, yeah they, had their, they had their their, their 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 scout guy who was also GM and then Doug Williams for whatever reason uh, would also be a guy that they they gave him like you know uh, executive consultant to personnel or something. I mean it's just crazy titles you know and I just dude at some point it was like they, there were so many chefs in the kitchen how could you make one entree with all these chefs tr- cooking all these meals it was just insanity yeah. and and then yeah and then you've got Jason Wright who was a guy who was supposed to be a marketing guy and then he became the president like well what does that mean and then he's talking about you know players and it's like you don't know what you played one year in the NFL and you weren't even any good <laughs> like, I mean it was just crazy like it was crazy that was a system of dysfunction like that's exactly why these players were allowed to walk in the door these guys that we drafted that just haven't panned out because honestly and it's not even I'm not overblowing this Literally nobody knew what they were doing. Nobody yeah. knew what they were doing. 
Yeah. And again, uh, and not to keep looking back, but I mean, that's what's so refreshing about this commander's team, because it seems like in one year they have literally flipped the script to not knowing anything to coaching great, picking good players, getting the, the people in the right positions, hiring the right coaches, and and really, uh, you know, it's it, man, it, it is, and I started the podcast, it is a testament to Dan Quinn, who just surprised me. Um, and, you know, the guy was out for three or four years of being four or five years of being head coach, and you could tell he was thinking about it, and he says it a lot. I was planning, you know, I, I wrote down what I needed to get better at, what I wanted to be good at, and... Uh, I mean, dude, it's just, and again, it's, you hear this saying all the time, it's about timing and the timing literally just lined up all the stars aligned to put us where we are right now, halfway through this season and really four five, six, seven years down the road. Yeah. Like I said, this, the window's open. Like you have that feeling of like, this is the start of something. We'll look back at this season, Jaden's rookie year and go, look at all these things, these, these, these kind of core values that started coming, coming into play. And, uh, you know, it's just it, it, it's just a different feeling. But again, we're sitting here because for years and years, we're like, how do these other teams turn stuff around in a year or two? Yes. How do they do it? We like it's said it, that a hundred times. Possible. Yeah, we're, you know, it's like we're, we're, we're four and a half years into the rebuild with Ron Rivera and everyone's like, what is going on? And he just says, trust the plan. And it's like, I don't. That don't and position it. flex was big with him. But, uh, <laughs> so, Gosh, dude. Crazy. Uh, yeah, and and I then know. another thing, too, that I still get crazy about, like, if you want to look for a barometer, you know, Ron Rivera didn't want to be done coaching. So he was up for another. He wanted to get another HUD catching job. Nobody would even consider it. But then he went on, like, four defensive coordinator interviews, didn't even get an offer. Yeah. So you're talking about, you know, and I like Ron as a guy. But that's somebody that I don't know if the time passed him by, if he ran out of energy, ran out of interest, whatever it was, man, he had no business running an NFL franchise as a GM, a coach, when you couldn't even go get a DC job somewhere. Yeah. I mean, that is a, that's a, that is a indictment right there on, on him. And maybe he will, maybe he'll sit out and whatever and, and come back. But uh, uh, I'm just so I glad to be evil. done. <laughs> so glad to be done with not only that era and the Dan Snyder era and all of the, the BS that was never about football in the first place. And uh, to be at a space where we are now, where, you know, my 14 year old son, you have kids that, that are young, actually called me the other day to talk about Jaden Daniels and the catch and where he was and shoot dad, we should go to a game. I mean, it's, it's a miracle because this, what this team did for me as a child, which is why I love it so much. Um, you know, it really brings, you know this as much as I do. Back in the DMV, this team is like Santa Claus. It just brings everybody to No one is mad. You know, traffic on 495 sucks. But if you're if you everyone's winning and we're going to playoffs, everyone's like, oh, come on in. Yeah, you can merge. I don't care. We <laughs> love everybody in this city because our football team is good again. Yeah. Yeah, I'll sit on 270 for three hours <laughs> and go 30 feet if yeah, I yeah. can just be happy. I can <laughs> just be happy, and if we're 6-2, and two, I'm happy to do the 270 parking lot. It's yeah. not a big deal, but you're right, dude. And like I said, Jim's, Jim Nance, I mean, it's like, you know, this town is going crazy. And then we saw the videos of all the sports bars and the restaurants and in people's basements and garages and everything, and it's like, he was right, dude. It was not just the stadium. It was the town that was going crazy. It was decades of pent up emotion. I mean, you had total strangers just hugging each other. Yeah, oh. that's been that's been forever. In yeah. DC. And it has been, and uh, and you will always know where you were when it happened, and always. it just always. I think you hit the nail on the head too, man. It is like uh, that. I don't know if it's a curse, but you could just feel. 35 years of pressure just be released uh, in one foul swoop. Yeah, and you know what's funny? Like, it, it had we won the game, just, I mean, that game should have been 21, 24 nothing at, at halftime. Um, you know, we're in the red zone, we're dominating, and if we win the game, we're still happy. But for some reason, yeah, like it was like divine was intervention. Like we we needed that. Yeah. We needed that. It had to be that. It had to be off script, unimaginable, right. just something that nobody could comprehend. It almost needed that moment to really just say, okay, like we're good now. Right. 
I mean, and one of my favorite videos that sort of encapsulates everything you just said there is, I don't know if you've seen this one, uh, but uh, because, you know, we're used to, you know, this guy was even being like, you know what? I, well, here, let me just play it for you, because this really is every Commanders fan you could possibly uh, imagine. I mean, I feel as though it was a good game because it was close. Like, I feel as though we won, for real. We, 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 we like... <laughs> what, what I say? We won! What I say? We won! We won! Uh, just by going, you know what? what? I what the hell is Fox Five having a funeral before the end of the game? Well, you know, a lot of people did that. We sort of talked a little bit about, uh, you know, JP Finley tweeted out that was the worst loss ever that went yeah. out, and yeah. I think uh, uh, Ben Standing or I had a tweet that was like, "This is going to go down as this." That. And you're right. I mean, these people like, you know, not I'm not having funerals till someone's dead. And, you know, with this team and everything like that, like, you know, I just I you're right, though. I saw a lot of that. I saw a lot of that. And but that, well, we're used to it. That's why <laughs> I, I guess so. I guess. <laughs> hey, it's the fourth quarter. We're not winning. We lost. It's yeah. over. We know how this goes. But yeah, man, there was a lot of premature funerals um, on Sunday night, Sunday afternoon. And I, I don't know, man, but to be in the stadium and already interviewing people about the loss when there's still time <laughs> on the clock, that's. Uh, but but uh, but then they got that right. They get that piece though. So right. more people's more people are going to watch that than watch whatever report they were going to run, whatever oh. they were talking about. Yeah, that so thing's already gotten. I think that had like over a million views. Yeah, uh, yeah. So yeah, they they hit gold with that for sure. But again, and we talked about it a little bit earlier. There, I don't remember ever a time of getting a, a Hail Mary, especially since the 1970 merger, uh, like you looked up, uh, there has never, we've never won the game on a last, on, on a, on a touchdown. Now, obviously we've had field goals to win games, but, uh, but that type of comeback has never happened. Yeah. No Hail Mary since uh, going back to 19, 1970. I don't know what they actually consider a Hail Mary. Like I don't, that's interesting. You know, a 20 yard pass wouldn't be a Hail Mary. Is it at least 50 yards? I mean, I don't know what they consider. Yeah, that's what it is. I, to me, a Hail Mary is no time left on the clock and you got to score a touchdown. So I don't, even if you're on the 10 yard line, well, I guess the 10 wouldn't be, but I mean, I mean, anything from maybe the, yeah, that's a good idea. That's a good they're point. Gonna, maybe 30 yards, 40 they're yards. Have to put a yardage thing to that because uh, I was thinking about that today, you know, yeah, about the really merger. And I'm like, well, I mean, is the 25, like if you're running for your life, the, is the 25 a Hail Mary? I mean, for me, a Hail Mary has to be there's no time on the clock and you're down right. by more. It's the last play of the game. It has last to be play. the Hail Mary is the, is the last play. I just wonder the yardage. Yeah. If, it's, if it's the if it's the last play and you're on the eight, I'm not saying, whoa, Hail Mary. <laughs> yeah. It's just an yeah, out Because he's got to wing it. Uh, yeah, that is a good I wonder, what, I wonder yeah. if there's if anybody knows, uh, hit us up in the comments here uh, and, and let us know what you think. I, I mean, for me, uh, yeah, you're right. I think it has to be either you're 40 and back. I think if you're on the 40 going in, because then you're standing at the 50 and you're throwing a ball, you know what I mean? Like, so, yeah, yeah so maybe, and maybe it's got to be the yards it travels in the air. Maybe it's more that than the yard. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's interesting though, because everybody now, listen, I've never heard, I've never heard just fans of sports, fans of football, not even, not even Redskins commanders fans. Um, just talking about Hail Mary. I've heard the word Hail Mary 9 billion times in the last four days. Everybody <laughs> talking about Hail Mary's now, and I love it. I mean, I think it's awesome, but it's like, it's kind of like, it's not a very defined term. We don't really know yet what it actually means. I mean, before Jaden on Sunday, my best memories of Hail Marys were Aaron Rodgers. He had a couple um, that made famous that he made famous to end games. So um, yeah. I, I don't know. But it's, it's interesting how how well, they measure that. I know that uh, that uh, the Cowboys. So here's the definition of a Hail Mary. Um, American football, a long, typically unsuccessful pass made in desperate <laughs> attempt to score late in the game. They beat the 49ers on a Hail Mary pass in the final seconds is what, so it doesn't say exactly long, long is so subjective. I mean, yeah. I, and again, if you're on the 25 and you're being chased by three guys, that's a long pass. Now, yeah. if you're on the 16 and you've got all the time in the world to throw it, I don't know that that's a long pass. Yeah, that is actually a really good question. That's one we should uh, we'll we'll break this out and put it on TikTok uh, to see what your definition is because that is really a good a good a good question. <laughs> but you're right. I haven't thought or uh, said the word uh, the word hail mary for for the longest time. Uh, you know, and it is funny now that that's really just the vernacular all over the DMV.
And do you notice too that it's half the people say Hell Mary and some people say Hail Mary? Oh, really? Oh, uh, yeah. So a lot of people don't know, and I've even seen the way it's spelt. Hell Mary, <laughs> Hail Mary, and so it seems to be. Some well, it was definitely a Hail Mary for the Bears. I can tell yeah, you that, that much. Hail Mary, all right. But, <laughs> but that, that's another thing too that um, I've seen a lot on Twitter and TikTok is you see that Hell Mary. I'm like, it's Hail Mary. Yeah, yeah, and but it's funny because we use Hail all the time. We as raised Hail, so, yeah, so that was pretty good. Yeah, uh, so as uh, the more we can get, the better. Uh, all right, well, uh, we're here at the end. Let's give us uh, some predictions on what you think is going to happen uh, here against the Giants. Uh, it's a Sunday one. This game is not going to get flexed for sure. Uh, <laughs> so uh, what do you think is going to happen? And give me a final score prediction. Yeah. Um, all right. So final score. Um, I just think this I think this is very similar to the Bears game and, and probably not as much scoring. Uh, so I like uh, I like like an 18 to 12. Um, I hate Boy, to you like it. these gut punches, man. Yeah, I hate the end of this game this week. I I, I I hate the end of this game. Um, you know, it's just one of those games where I think we'll say, man, the defense, the defense did their job. You can't be mad at the defense, but there were just some things on offense, you know, that the Giants just just were were stingy. I hope I'm dead wrong, but I got like an 18-12, maybe like a 19 to 10, kind of an ugly kind of an ugly battle it out NFC East in, in November. It'll be November by then. That's that's the way it should be in the NFC East in November. Yeah. yeah. A dog fight. Well, Kevon Thibodeau is uh, likely to not play. We don't know yet. Uh, Dexter Lawrence is going to be in there. They've got a good defense. Daniel Jones always plays us like he's Joe Montana, but I really think that uh, seeing them one time through is going to help this defense and Joe Witt Jr. really – dial up some pressures that Dana Jones hasn't seen. I think we're going to have a plan for Malik Neighbors. Uh, I think that uh, it's going to be a 27-16 Washington win uh, rather easily. Never really. Maybe at some point in the third quarter it's you know a little scary, but uh, then I think our running game is going to, is going to be uh, evident. I think we're going to you know curb the mistakes that we had the first time and last week, and I think that uh, we're going to come out and, uh, uh, victorious. But again, I'm a homer, and I'm always an optimistic person. Well, and I think that's good. I have actually become less optimistic. I used to be more more like that. I just I'm not used to this, but but not to jump too far ahead. I will say that the following week's opponent, the Steelers, will be our second opponent in three weeks coming off of a bye. Yeah, so the, NFL, I think, the NFL did us no favors by yeah. letting teams rest up and create a battle plan. Didn't work out for the Bears. Actually, it looks like it worked against them, uh, at least from their offensive output. But we'll see what happens uh, with, with the Steelers. But our second opponent in three weeks that'll be coming off a bye. I think I will have to go and after the show we'll do some research here but I think we play like four or five teams coming off buys this year. Criminal, I think the Eagles dude. actually it's, are coming off a It's buy. criminal. Yeah. Like I mean it's it's criminal. Like you you're getting these teams back to 100%. Listen, I get if it happens one or two times, but you can't have a quarter of your season your opponents are coming off buys. Yeah. Well, listen, I'm never going to be – I know that the league is biased against uh, the old name, the old team, the old own owner, and I. And, and obviously, you know, that's why when people are like, oh, you guys held on last – like, bro, you guys did – there was 20 penalties in there they could have called on on, on the, the Bears. We, we are the king of not getting any calls ever. So I don't ever want to hear about you did this, you did that, you got away with it. We don't get away with anything. Yeah, but they We've never – like New York about, calling. They never want to talk about – their their cornerback who is taunting the crowd as our wide receivers are sprinting towards the end zone. <laughs> but the most important thing is him getting a senseless 15 yard penalty because he wanted to fight people. Yeah. So you know it's it, it's like anything else. You make sure your house is clean before you start calling other people's ho uh, houses dirty, right? And that's I mean, and like I said, I look at Caleb's performance. Two weeks they had the buy. It was terrible. You can worry about a holding penalty here, a holding penalty there. There was. There was at least 10 penalties on each team that didn't get called. I heard a guy say that every every game there's at least 10 that don't get called, so just accept it. Yeah. Yeah, and again, I'm never going to be, uh, be – we've gotten the worst calls. If I really wanted to spend most of my life going through like a bunch of film, I could show you 10,000 plays in which we've gotten the weirdest, most bizarre calls against our team and calling touchdowns. By the way, in that game, we had two touchdowns called back. Yeah, or, two, what, two. yeah. Uh, well, then we have the drops. So, I mean, you know, and the other thing I'll say is I read something, too, about Hail Marys. It is theoretically impossible for there not to be a legal contact on a Hail Mary, and it never gets called. 
because you cannot make contact with a wide receiver that would impede him at all. And every single one of those Hail Marys. Oh, well, it's a melee. Elbows in people's faces. <laughs> they're grabbing the backs of their shoulders and you'll never see a flag. So, you know, you could play this game all day. If Noah Brown drops the ball, why didn't you throw a flag for pass interference or legal contact, which would have given us another crack at it. If it was the pass interference and it was in the end zone, it would have been right up on the one yard line. So, and this is the other thing about Bears fans. It's like they keep wanting to play this match of tug of war, but it's over. Yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, one of the best views of that, you might go find her on TikTok, is put Caleb Williams on the sideline when it's all over. He's pissed. I think he's screaming at people. Uh, I think his nail polish came off. He couldn't find his purse. I mean, it was all jacked up over there. So uh, that's what you Bears fans have to look forward to. Uh, coming up so uh, you know what maybe we'll see in the playoffs uh, maybe we won't but um, yeah I mean uh, you're uh, right you dude. another two weeks of that shit with those guys oh my gosh oh dude jeez <laughs> I mean it was uh, not pretty and not fun for sure but uh, but that's over and uh, hopefully we'll see uh, we'll see him in the playoffs man you never know uh, all right, that's the end of uh, the podcast. Thank you very much for being right here. We appreciate uh, everybody. Uh, make sure you hit share, like, comment. Let us know what you think. Let us know what you think about the Hail Mary. Uh, is there a certain distance it has to be for you? Uh, what is that distance? Leave it in the comments, and uh, we will be back with another one, probably a reactionary uh, game uh, game take after uh, we hopefully beat the New York Giants in New York. All right, for Marco, Billy, right here, it's the Fun Bunch Podcast here on YouTube.